Hello people, I'm Bharat Acharya. Welcome to our new video. So what are we doing today? Today, we're going to continue doing 8086 assembly programming. The same thing that we started last lecture on the simulator. We're going to go a few steps ahead, do a far more complex program today. So what we did last lecture was basically a program to add two numbers where more than the logic of the program, what I was teaching you was how to accept inputs from the user, how to display result on the screen. Remember IND21, Remember what happens to ASCII values when you enter 3, you don't get 3, you get 33. So when you are accepting inputs, you have to remove the ASCII value. When you are sending out outputs, you have to attach an ASCII value, etc. So you've done that. Now I know, all my students know how to get inputs and how to display results on screen. Now we can focus on more intense programs. Today's program, fabulous, tremendous real world use. We are doing a program to add a series of numbers. I'm sure everybody, every college in their practicals has this question in their practical uh, set of uh, programs that they do. Write a program to add a series of numbers, display the result and things like that. Uh, the reason why you have this program is because it has tremendous practical use. Come on, add a series of numbers. You don't want me to give you the examples. You can figure them out yourself. Simplest, your report card. So and so subject marks, subject marks, subject marks, subject marks. At the end, grand total out of percentage, average, whatever you may call it. So that's one application. Cricket match score. Batsman score, batsman score, batsman runs, batsman runs. Then the net runs of the team, which is a series, uh, an addition of a series of numbers. Your holiday budget. Goa, wherever you're going, your ticket price, your room stay, your food, X, Y, Z, stop thinking, focus here, focus here, okay, no, wrong example, shopping, shopping, okay, whatever, you got my point, you want to add a series of numbers, you are going to use this program tremendously, it has tremendous applications, that's why every college does it in their practicals, so in all probabilities, you will also be doing it and may even get in the exam, so I'm going to show, so what do you learn over here in this, not only how to accept not one input, but a set of inputs, even store them. Now, when you get one number from the user, you store it in a variable. When you get a series of numbers from the user, you're not going to make different different variables, you're going to make an array. So this program is going to teach you how to work with arrays in assembly programming, real world arrays taken from the user. Anyway, so you'll take all the numbers, store them in your array, then run a loop where you'll add all the numbers from your array, get your grand total, finally display the result. The first time we do this program, we'll do it for hexadecimal numbers. That's the numbers that you're going to do it with in your college. Then with a small tweak, not really small, but a small tweak, which will take about five, six minutes to explain. I will show you how to modify this program to add a series of decimal numbers. Because in real world, whether it's a cricket match score, whether it's your, like I said, your holiday budget or your marks, they are all decimal numbers. You know the difference, right? If you add, if you run this program for hexadecimal addition, if you're adding 50 plus 50, it will give you A0. But if you run the same program for decimal addition, you add 50 plus 50, it will give you 100, that is 100, which is what it should give you if you want this program to work for the real world. So I'm going to show you how to do it for hexadecimal numbers first, then I'll show you how to do the modification for decimal numbers. Yeah, I know you're bursting to say we'll be using DA instruction. Of course we'll be using, but it's not so simple as just put DA after the addition, it'll work. No, if things had to work by themselves like that, why would they need programmers? Why would we be in so much demand? Anyway, so that's the program that we're going to do today. Uh, the whole program is there on my website. Of course, this is an introduction. Come on my website, www.bharatacharyaeducation.com. Register yourself as a user. Take the course of 8086. This program, along with many other videos, the whole theory of 8086, architecture, instruction set, addressing modes, uh, programs on paper, which you use in the real, uh, in the uh, college exam, where you're writing a theory exam and you're writing a program on paper, then you no need user inputs and user outputs. Then you just read the core programs. So I've done lots of videos on those. All the theory of 8086, interrupt structure, minimum mode, maximum mode, please tell me you know all those things. If you don't, you have to take the course. Uh, Peripheral chips, 8259, 8255528237, they're all their architectures, their programming, their control words, their designing, circuits, etc. Then finally, memory designing, where you put RAM, ROM, so and so amount of RAM, so and so amount of ROM, you make the memory map, you do designing. They're not the best things to learn in MUPI. Anyway, so you have that whole course of 8086. In that same course, I've added these videos also. I will be making more videos on programming because I believe programming is fun. I believe engineers should know how to code. Okay, you uh, take uh, any newspaper during placement season, when placement season starts, 
most big company heads, Wipro, Accenture, TCS, Putney. It's a normal message that you see coming across from all the HR heads. 70% engineers in India are unemployable. They are engineers, but they are unemployable. They have the degree. They have no knowledge because what do you do? What do you think? You're going to sit in that office and chit-chat with people? No, you got to code. If you don't know how to do basic programming, how do you expect to understand big programming? You got to take that step. Programming is something... Once you know how to do it for one language, you know it for all languages. The skill of programming is what you need to develop. Working with variables, working with loops, understanding how to use conditions in a program, how to work with arrays, then bigger data structures and so on. So you start with any one language and then you develop yourself. I take programming very seriously. Those who physically learned from me in classroom lectures, they know. Sometimes I spend one three-hour lecture, two three-hour lectures back to back only doing programs because I want my students to be good at this. So that's what is the attempt to do over here also. Hope to see you there. Wish you all the best. Do well.